The knot is set to account for 87% of all the poor people in Nigeria in 2016. The World Bank report has disclosed in a new report. The report's titled Advancing in Social Protection in a Dynamic Nigeria, released on January 28, 2020, was described as a detailed analysis of the social protection sector in the country. The report noted that social protection measures implemented by the government in Nigeria have not been able to address the high level of poverty as well as the negative impact of conflict and natural disasters. The World Bank observed that although Nigeria is richly endowed, it had a larger proportion of the world's extreme poor than in any other nation. Joining me to discuss this is Abubakar Suleiman, MD, Sterling Bank. Thank you very much for your time on the news. The report says 87% um, in the north. What is the implication of this finding? Um, I think we should first think about the implication of this for the country. Uh, there is this sense that you could uh, physically demarcate the north from the rest of the country. The truth is that there is no border. It is just a single fluid country. And the fact that they are aggregated in one segment of the country doesn't change the fact that the entire country is in trouble. So it's something I always like to put out there. Um, the second question is, um, there were references to social protection. Uh, the truth is that social protection has to come as a part of the total income in the economy. And if you're not generating enough, there's no amount of social protection that would help. So we need to ask ourselves, as a country of nearly 200 million people, do we have enough income to take care of our responsibilities? And those are the things that come first. Uh, as for implication, I think it's quite obvious. We have... Um, Amongst, uh, we have one of the highest level of unemployment right now we've had in a long time. We have over 20 million people that are fully unemployed. Uh, and so even if you were to put more people into the labor market, there, is, there are no jobs for them. So this is about creating jobs above everything else. You, you talked about the social protection measures. And what would we'll say, what have we been doing and what more needs to be done really to address this particular aspect? Um, I would say that I've never been one to uh, argue for um, government uh, as a way of um, eradicating poverty directly by putting money in people's hands simply because they don't have enough. If you think about it, the entire revenue of the federal government is $20 billion. Uh, but the government is indeed putting money in people's hands. Correct. With the but strategies I, but that I would never advocate for that. I mean, there are instances where such interventions are required. So for instance, after a natural disaster, you need to put money in people's hands, or in between interventions. So, so we all argue about the need to create employment and the need to improve the quality of education. In between those, um, implementing those measures, you can put money in people's hands. And you can also put money in the hands of those who are not equipped to take care of themselves. So putting money in the hands of elderly people, for instance, is something that I argue for. Or you can put money where it matters the most. Put money in education, put money in healthcare, primary healthcare, so that people are then able to develop themselves and earn a living. Um, so if you could put money in everybody's hands and there would be enough to go around, maybe I would be tempted to look at that option. I know for, with, uh, with certainty that it's never going to be enough to get people out of poverty. You mentioned something earlier when you started about the fact that it is not peculiar to the north, it's a general thing. But that same report says in the south-south, um, there are around 12% with various, as poverty rates in the south-to-south -south zone, it's about 12% compared to what we have uh, in the other zone. They saw the most significant drop in the poverty level um, between 2011 and 2016. The report also stated that regionally, the not lags far behind the South in every human capital out, um, outcome. What is being done differently in the South, really, that has impacted enough to put them ahead of the people in the North? Because whether we like it or not, this report is saying there is a distinction between the South and the the, I mean, it's clear why this household has the lowest level of poverty. I don't think it's clear to a lot of persons. It's, I mean, it's oil. If you take out the oil revenue from the south-south states, the poverty level jumps up significantly. And the way to understand that is look at the breakdown of the revenue composition. The bulk of the revenue is from FAC and from the derivation. So they get a 13% derivation for, for the oil producing state, and then they get a significant part of the FAC. Is that the only contributory factor for, for the, the South -South. level? Yes. So I, I'm, I, I don't think that, they, um, that there's any material contributory factor in terms of the reduction of poverty for now. Um, obviously, if you take the South historically, being better educated, uh, um, you would see some material improvement 
relative to the north without the impact. Think about it this way. When you look at the IGR today, the top five states, three of them are oil producing states. The other two that are not oil producing is Lagos and Ogun State, which is the economic heart of Lagos, uh, of the country. Um, imagine from being the political capital. If you move out of the top five, the next one is Kaduna State. Right. So I think there is a resource problem, and there are two resource issues. There is the material resource issue, but there is also the human resource issue. And I think the focus should be on the human resource issue, because you can't change the material resource endowment or how it is exploited in a short period of time. And it's not a sustainable way to create wealth. And when you talk about human resource issue, the, one of the key things there is education. And right. Education, you also highlighted that there is, there is a difference in what we have in the north. We know that a lack of it or inadequate supply of it increases the level of uh, poverty. What's uh, your take on that as regards this report? I like to ask some very um, hard questions around education. That why exactly do we need it? Because it's something that is just assumed and everybody knows. Uh, three major things that come out of education for me. The first one is literacy, just the ability to read and write and therefore to learn. The second one is the um, civic and ethics. So when you go through an educational institution, you're supposed to come out, uh, be a better citizen, and be able to function in the society. And the third one is skills acquisition, or the skills you require to be gainfully employed. If we think, if we think about it carefully, if you think about the last one, we have 25% plus unemployment. So clearly, the people going through the schools are not coming out and getting employed. So we need to be careful how much more we put through that process. Uh, if you think about the second one, um, civics and, and um, ethics, uh, just look at around the society. This is society is certainly not, people are not learning to be better citizens from school. They're not learning to be better neighbors from school. And then you look at the first one, which is literacy. The objective of that is for you to be able to learn, to be informed. All you need to do is get onto social media, listen to the conversation. Our educational system is broken. Um, never mind where is more broken. We, if we don't fix that, no matter how many people we put through that process, we're just going to have more educated, unemployed people. I think that is a real question to be had. As for the North and as for the intervention in the North, given the current state, I would say that the current educational system that requires you to spend 10 plus years to get basic education is way too expensive, way too long, takes too much time, and we cannot afford it. And um, if we want to fix that problem, we need to create an educational system that takes a shorter time, costs far less, and you can come out at the end of a year, two years, and just be a better person, be, be able to earn a living. Those sort of intervention is far more important than trying to put more money in the broken educational system. Okay, um, there's so much to talk about uh, in education, but let's take a look at the link that was established in that report between um, poverty and insurgency uh, in the North. The Boko Haram specifically um, was highlighted According to the World Bank, most of the youths recruited for Boko Haram are jobless, a development which made them more prone to radicalization. My question is, what needs to be done? You know, and some persons are saying that if we cannot um, eradicate poverty, I mean, eradicate insurgency, then we might really not um, achieve much when it comes to um, fighting a, a lack of education and poverty. What's your take on that? Um, the unemployed youth are the canon fodder for all kinds of conflicts um, and for all kinds of uh, mischief. So one aspect of it is insurgency and Boko Haram. If you move further, you start to see them engage in armed robbery and um, you also see them in um, political torture. So these are people that the life is cheap for them and therefore wherever they may be, um, if we don't do something, they are available to be used. So that, that is one thing to think about. The other point is, um, you're right, if we don't um, ease the level of unemployment, uh, there is no way we're going to have a stable society. The two major problems Nigeria faces, the first one is that we're simply not creating enough wealth, meaning that there are not enough jobs, there are not enough employment, they're just, we're not creating enough to, for government to have the revenue for intervention. And the second one is that even when we do create, it is um, highly unequal. It is highly, um, it is skewed in the distribution. So we have a few people controlling a vast amount of wealth. And because most of that is not done creating jobs, uh, in many cases when you become a billionaire, you'd have created jobs, a lot of jobs are on the way to becoming a billionaire. Here it is very possible to be a billionaire and not have created jobs. Especially if you're a billionaire in resource extraction, 
right? So we have to create an economy that is large enough for our citizenry. And then we need to create an economy that is rich enough for us to then begin to take our place in, in, in the global, at the global stage. Okay, before I let you go, I need to uh, talk about the emergency preparedness that we, um, as, as is in this country. In 2018 alone, the report uh, said over 600,000 Nigerians um, were displaced due to natural disaster and more than uh, 500 and 540,000 um, were displaced due to conflict and violence. Can we improve on our emergency preparedness, like not just rhetorics this time, but in concrete steps. And what are these steps, in your opinion? I think the missing link in emergency response is that it's not localized. So what happened is an event happens somewhere in Damaturu, and then you sit down in Abuja and you begin to think of how to respond. If we don't build capacity for emergency response within the communities themselves, if we don't find a way to respond quicker because we are on ground, then we're always going to struggle to get there on time. But also, it is far more uh, expensive to respond planning at the national level for a very local event. So we need, again, it comes down to how have we empowered the local government? How have we taken government to the people? If there is something going on in a local government somewhere in Ebony, I need the local government chair to be at the front of that response. I need them to be resourced for that. I need them to be equipped for that as opposed to waiting for an emergency response organized out of Abuja. That for me would be the most important thing to do with emergency response. I want to say thank you very much for your time so far on the news. It's a pleasure to be here.